Alright, so this is the practice video number one for the quadratic formula. We're going to do number one, two, and five on this practice worksheet. Um, remember, when you're using the quadratic formula, which is over here in the small box, um, you need to make sure that the quadratic is set equal to zero. And in number one, it's equal to four. So the first thing you have to do is subtract four from both sides. When you do that, you'll get 4x squared plus 8x, and 7 minus 4 is 3. Now that you're set equal to 0, you can use the quadratic formula. Here, you need to identify a, b, and c. a is the first number, 4, b is 8, and c is 3. Now, when I put this in the quadratic formula, that is set up as x equals. Now, it says the opposite of b, so the opposite here of 8 is negative 8 plus or minus a giant square root. Now under that square root you put b, which is 8 in parentheses, squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4, c, which is 3. Alright, and then on the bottom this all goes over 2 times a, which is 4 again. Now, remember, when we simplify the quadratic formula here, you are starting by only simplifying what is underneath the radical. Not, you're not going to put the radical down. So we're going to rewrite this as negative 8 plus or minus the square root. We're going to find what goes under that square root over 8, 2 times 4. Now, you can use your calculator or use decimals here. I'm going to use decimals. And we're only going to type the radicand, the yellow stuff in there. So we're going to have parentheses 8 squared minus 4 times a times b. And that tells us that the value is 16 under the radical. So uh, plus or minus the square root of 16. Now, when I do the quadratic formula, remember, we need to simplify the radical now. And you should know that radical 16 is equal to 4. So you have negative 8 plus or minus 4 over 8. Now one thing to remember is that when you get to this point and there's no square root left, you need to rewrite this as two numbers. Two numbers without a radical. So we're going to split this up. I'm going to do negative 8 plus 4 over 8. Well, negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4 over 8, which simplifies to negative 1 half. That's one solution. And the other fraction is going to be negative 8 minus 4 over 8. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12 over 8, which simplifies to be negative 3 over 2. Okay, so your final answers are negative 1 half and negative 3 over 2. So that goes up here. Negative 1 half, negative 3 over 2. And then, yes, this could be factored because those are rational answers. Alright, so let's look at number two here. <coughs> My quadratic starts is already set equal to zero, so I'm going to label a, b, and c. a is five, b is eight, c is five. When I put this into the quadratic formula, I start by taking the opposite of b, which is negative eight, plus or minus, now under our square root, I'm going to put that eight in parentheses again, squared, minus four, times a times c. Now I'm going to put that all over 2 times 5, which is 2 times a. Now we want to simplify this. Okay, so remember, I'm leaving the radical part. I'm only going to simplify what's underneath the radical. Right? So that means I'm only going to put into my calculator 8 squared minus 4 times 5 plus 5. So when I get here, I'll do 8 squared minus 4 times 5 times 5, which is negative 36. All right, so when we come back here, we're going to rewrite this radical as the square root of negative 36. All right, now just like the last problem, we need to simplify that square root. Now, I'm going to do this off to the side. The square root of negative 36, well, remember, if I have a negative, I have to pull out the negative 1, and then 36 is actually a perfect square. 
So square root of 36 is 6, square root of negative 1 is i. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus 6i over 10, which is simplified, but it's not fully simplified. You should notice that the 8, 6, and 10 all have 2 that go into them. So I'm going to divide each of those numbers by 2, which would give me an answer of a negative 4 plus or minus 3i over 5. So I divided each term by 2. I don't need to break it up like the last problem into two fractions because I have i in my answer. I only break it up into two rational numbers if there's no i and no radical. Because there's an i, I could not factor this quadratic. Our last one here, we're going to do number 5. <clears throat> we are set equal to 0, so we go ahead and start by labeling A, B, and C. A is the coefficient 1, B is 8 again, and C is 13. Let's put this into the formula. Do the opposite of B, plus or minus, and we have a long square root. We'll have 8 in parentheses squared, <clears throat> minus 4, times a, which is 1, times 13. And it's all going to go over 2 times 1. Alright, just like the last two problems, I'm going to simplify here what's underneath the radical. So I'm going to type 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13 into Desmo. So 4 times 1 times 13. And I get 12. So 12 is what's underneath our radical here. And just like the last problem, off to the side, 12 isn't a perfect square. So I need to figure out what radical 12 is simplified at. The biggest perfect square that goes into 12 is 4. It's going to be radical 4 times radical 3, which simplifies to be 2 radical 3. So I'm going to replace that 2 radical 3 with the radical 12 which I can write as negative 8 plus or minus 2 radical 3 over 2. And again, all I did was replace. Everything in green is the same. Now, you should see that 8, <coughs> 2, and 2, I can divide by 2 here. I'm going to divide this first fraction, negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4, plus or minus, well, 2 divided by 2 is 1 radical 3. So that's your final answer. x equals negative 4 plus or minus 1 or just radical 3. It's not factorable because those are irrational numbers. Right? If you need other help on this practice, you need to check the key that's on Canvas or ask your teacher for